If there is one place on the face of the earth where all the dreams of living man have found a home, from the very earliest days when man began to dream of existence, it is India, quoted by Roman Rollin. A very pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. The topic that I'm going to speak today is about patriotism and nation building. What is patriotism? Patriotism is the determination for owning your country, the spirit to stand and face all odds, to liberate the country, the love and emotion for motherland. Patriotism is typically defined as the love of one's country, and such love seems decent and normal to most people. In the Cambridge Dictionary, patriotism means the feeling of loving your country more than any other and being proud of it. George Bernard Shaw has also quoted saying, Patriotism is your conviction that this country is superior to all other countries because you were born in it. Problem is that we Indians are not able to define our identity clearly. And after 70 years of independence also, just hanging from the labrin of several dogmas and doctrines like secularism, communalism, casteism, regionalism, and so on. And the simple doctrine of patriotism is remains buried and forgotten in the books of Indian history. When the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, said in his campaign, America is not a bunch of individuals or blue states or white states. It is the United States of America. The spirit of patriotism clearly sparkled from his speech and they showed this integrity in the action plan for a country. But our leaders of government are ever ready to cut and divide the Indians based on caste, based on community, and based on religion. And the spirit of love for the country, respect for his countrymen, and determination to lead the country to a better future is totally lost in India. We, the Indians, celebrate Gandhi Jayanti, but the essence of his Swadeshi movement is neither understood nor replicated by the Indian policymakers, businessmen, and bureaucrats. We are not able to bring out our originality and deploy those accessibly to influence our market. Our educated mass remains apathetic to the pains and problems of the country. The brainwash they receive in education does not create a scope to discover culture, neither inculcate human value or love for the country. Our youths are exposed to a scenario of violence, consumerism, separatism, and corruption. Then how can they expect such a patriotic attitude and gesture from the youth? Moreover, Henry James at once said, I think patriotism is like charity, it begins at home. Patriotism does not only mean to struggle for the freedom of one's country. It also includes the honest feeling and true love for a country displayed through passionate work for the country's development. It is said that a small drop of water can make a mighty ocean. Your, mine, and our very contribution can make a huge impact on the society we live in. But remember, there is a thin line between patriotism, fanatism, and extremism. Patriotism is, however, very easy to get young men like you and me to be willing to sacrifice themselves for a nation. But if you want a better world and if you want a world with a peace, then patriotism should have its limitations. Donald Trump at one stage, when you open your heart to patriotism, there is no room for privilege. The Bible tells us how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Patriotism and nation building should coexist and supplement each other. Because when you say you are a patriotic individual and you have zero contribution towards the society in which you live in, your part of being a patriotic individual is of no value. So here are my opinions which I strongly believe which contributes towards building a nation or which hinders the nation's growth and development. The first is education. Swami Vivekananda had once said, education is the manifestation of perfection already in a man. In whichever profession we are, we all share the equal responsibility in building a nation. And here, particularly, I would like to stress more on education for children. It is because... Education is one of the strongest weapons which we can use to change the world. And to add, let me quote the words said by the former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. He said, no country can really develop unless its citizens are educated. Yes, in a developing country like India, we have much to achieve when we talk about equality in education. As we are still struggling to have to give equality to each and every section of our society. 
in their home to over 30% of 385 million children living in extreme poverty. So where do you think the future of those children lies? And how are those children going to contribute towards building a nation when they are yet to receive proper education? And why am I stressing more on education is because when you and I are educated, our thinking and analyzing capacity increases and therefore it creates a feeling of cooperation and a feeling of unity among the educated masses of our country. So in order to build a nation, let us start by educating the young minds of our country as we will directly be contributing towards building a nation. And the second point is woman equality. Since I come from Nagaland, where it is safe to be the safest place for women, and I'm more than proud to be called the daughter of this land. But it does not only end there, as we are still struggling to have equal status with men in the society. Being a patriarchal society, each old person will have hindered the growth and development and empowerment of women in Naga society. Even after 64 years of statehood, it has no woman MLA in Nagaland. And when I have to talk about India in general, we have seen in history how the status of women have evolved and changed according to the era of the Indian society. And India is undoubtedly called the land where women goddesses are worshipped. And this same land depicts the violent attacks and humiliation faced by women in physical, social, economic, political and cultural sphere. There are also lots of talks going on about woman equality, woman representation. And Subhash Chandra Bose had rightly said, no real change in the history has ever been achieved by discussion. So don't only talk, but show us we women in action because we already know that empty vessels make much noise. It is high time that a male-dominated society of ours wake up from the dreamland and comfort zone and give us we women equality in our spheres and areas of activities. And in order for a nation to develop, both the hands of men and women should work together as we cannot make a clapping sound with only a single hand. And the third point is discrimination. India is a land of diversity where we have people belonging to different geographical features, including different dialects, different traditions, different religions, and so on. And India being a democratic country, it is a sad reality to see the discrimination faced by our Northeastern brothers and sisters. And if this still goes on, then how can we imbibe a feeling of patriotism and a feeling of nation building among those Northeastern brothers and sisters? And how can they even work for their own country who discriminate and insult them? They will surely be isolated from the rest of the countrymen. And how can we even talk about patriotism where we have so much of hatred even between our own brothers and sisters? And I strongly believe that in order for a nation to develop, unity is very important. And when there is unity, then patriotism comes. And when there is patriotic, then ultimately comes nation building. And the fourth point is poverty. The most dangerous people in the world are not the tiny minority instigating evil acts, but those who do the acts for them. For example, when British invaded India, many Indians accepted to work for British for a paycheck. So as long as the money continues to seduce the hunger, the poor, and the needy, there will always be war between brothers. And here, in the present scenario of India, how can we talk about patriotism and nation building when we see our own people suffering? to get a single meal a day. And how can those people work for their country if their stomach is hungry? So until and unless these people are being uplifted from the zone, no seed of patriotism and no seed of nation building will be sown in their heart. Last but not the least, some of our citizens are highly conscious of their own actions and wish to change the world for better. When there are some who seldom think about where the country is going and are always busy dealing with their own life. So what do you think? Where do you stand as an individual in building a nation? Last but not the least, let me end my speech with a short poem that said, A nation's strength is not gold, but only men can make people great and strong. Men who for truth and honor sake stay fast and suffer long. Brave men who work while at a sleep, who dare while at a fly. They built a nation strong and lift them to the sky. Thank you, Jane.